Jessica walks into the room before her and sees the purple man laying in a bed. It appears that he is hooked up to various pieces of medical equipment used to keep him unconscious in order to harvest his blood. That is when a man walks into the room and greets her. He is Benjamin, the missing Kilgrave. His father always said that Jessica was strong. That is probably what he loved about her, what made her different. Unlike Jessica, he never wanted Benjamin. Benjamin never received the favor that his sister Kara or the other purple children received. He never had gifts. Instead, he had to become smart, smarter than them all. He discovered that if he mixed his father's blood with his own, then he could produce a side effect very similar to the other Kilgrave's powers. He could either choose to inject it into somebody's body, or he can make it into a gas. A gas that circulates throughout the air or the very house that Jessica is standing in. Luke walks into the room with his eyes still glowing purple. He reaches out to his wife, Jessica, and snatches the neural disruptor off her ear. Now that she has no form of protection for her mind, it will only be a matter of time until she falls like the rest of them. Life is perfect. It's a beautiful, bright, sunny day as Jessica wakes herself up with a morning stretch. As she sits herself up, she wonders about the dream she had last night. It left her feeling happy. You know what they say. Happy wife, happy life. As she greets her husband, Luke, she asks him what his plans are for the day. He plans on working on his bike with their son all day. It's their precious son, Benjamin. He enters the kitchen and greets his mom and dad. He also had a good night's rest. As he sips his juice, he tells his parents that he feels like a new man. Hopefully not too new, comments his father. They love him just the way he is. That is, everyone except for the dog. The dog just growls at him. Jessica spends the day finishing up some chores around the house. When she goes to finish putting away the laundry, she notices a closet on the end of the hall. Something about it calls out to her, so she approaches the door slowly to get a closer look. As she reaches for the doorknob, Benjamin opens the door and tells her that there is nothing in that room except for some old junk. Definitely nothing for her. Later, at dinner, the family cage are enjoying a nice meal together. They wrap up their meal and Benjamin holds up a needle filled with purple liquid. Jessica first. As she holds out her arm to take her shot, Benjamin consoles her. He is such a good son. Luke's turn. Benjamin turns on Luke's oxygen tank and says that as long as Luke takes in deep breaths, everything will be fine. That night, Jessica lays awake in her bed. For some reason, she cannot sleep. Something in the back of her mind is raking at her. She gets out of the bed and makes her way down the hallway. She approaches the door and sees that there is a padlock on there. Curious. What is even more curious is the dog that keeps following her from room to room. Saturdays are every kid's favorite day of the week. The perfect opportunity to share quality time with friends and family. 
The doorbell rings and when Benjamin answers, there are five children there to greet him. But they aren't supposed to be there. They were supposed to call. As they question Benjamin, they ask what she is doing there. This was never part of the original plan, and neither was her daughter. Benjamin says that he didn't do anything to the daughter, and if he wanted their opinion, he would ask. This enrages Ben, and he snaps back at the other children. He will call them when he is ready. As he slams the door, the children turn to each other. This situation has gotten very dangerous. If they are to proceed, they must tread lightly. Another sleepless night. But for some reason, this time Jessica somehow has the key. She approaches the door that has been calling out to her once again. She enters the key into the lock and opens the door. She sees a comatose woman laying in a bed. Jessica, alarmed, rushes to the side of the woman to see if she can help in any way. She sees Benjamin and tries to explain to him the situation, but when she turns back to look at the woman, she is gone. No woman, no bed, no medical equipment, just a desk in the dark. But on the desk was something special, something that Jessica can use. As she says goodnight to her son, she clutches onto the device. That is when she hears a voice, seemingly out of nowhere, tells her to fix it. She grabs the toolbox and starts tinkering with the device. When she completes her task, she puts on the device and instantly a splitting headache enters her skull and she kneels over in pain. The kitchen, Jessica. The kitchen. She walks into the kitchen and she sees him. The purple man tied up and gagged laying on the dog bed. You see, Jessica, he was here all along. His son had gone to great lengths to keep the purple man immobile, drugged, and incapable of taking control. Fortunately for them, Benjamin is asleep at the moment. Unfortunately, he is about to wake up and in order for them to take down Benjamin, Jessica will have to let the purple man take control of her body once more. When Benjamin wakes up, he walks into the kitchen and he calls out for his mother, Jessica. As the neural disruptor glows on her ear, she turns and tells her son that she can't hear him anymore. At least, not the way he needs her to. Chapter 2 